Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. On February 29th, Premier Daniel Smith and the governing United Conservative Party tabled Alberta's provincial budget. Now, according to the province, quote, with a steady focus on fiscal responsibility and wise spending, Alberta's government will continue to meet the needs of Albertans today and tomorrow, end quote. In 2024-2025, total revenue is estimated to be at $73.5 billion, which is $2.1 billion lower than the third quarter forecast from the previous year. While the total expense this year is $73.2 billion, a 3.9% increase from the forecast of 2023-2024. Now we sat down with today with Tyler Gandam, President of Alberta Municipalities, for his reaction on this provincial budget. Gandam says that the $722 million in funding allocation to the LGFF, or Local Government Fiscal Framework, in the provincial government's budget falls far short of what is needed to address infrastructure needs. As a prominent advocate for municipal interest, President Gandam's perspectives promises to shed light on the implications of this provincial budget. This is Municipal Affairs. There we go. President Gandam, thank you so much for doing this. I want to get your initial reactions from yesterday's budget that uh, Minister Horner uh, announced and the uh, UCB government has presented to Albertans from a municipal perspective. How did municipalities fare? Uh, I think first and foremost, the fact that we were asking for another billion dollars for infrastructure funding, um, we obviously didn't get that. So we're sitting at the proposed $722 million. Uh, it just... Um, it creates a, a tough environment for each of these municipalities who are struggling with a $30 billion infrastructure deficit um, to be able to maintain and, uh, and carry on with what we've got, let alone the fast moving communities uh, trying to build new infrastructure to welcome the, the Albertans that are calling their communities home now, um, struggling with that growth. Alberta has seen a population boom over the last few years, particularly in the last year since uh, the provincial government has unveiled their Alberta is calling campaign. Uh, while this government hasn't come to the table with new funding for LGFF, do municipalities have a bright future or are we sort of uh, looking at some unknown years ahead of us until this $30 billion deficit is uh, achieved or rectified, I should say? Yeah, municipalities are extremely resourceful. They uh, they hear and know the needs of our community members. Um, in terms of the growth, it's going to take a little bit longer maybe to get where we could be. Um, but I think uh, as we've always been, municipalities will be fine and they'll find a way to make it happen. And that's just continuing what we do, how we do it, um, and being the being there with our people and with our residents and understanding their needs. So while it might change the the speed or the trajectory of how quickly we're able to accommodate this growth in the province, um, we'll continue to do that. While I'm assuming this is still early days for you, but I'm I'm going to guess that you will be calling on Minister McIver and Premier Smith to have a sit down conversation around the LGFF funding and potentially see if you can get some more money out of them. Absolutely. I think it's really important that we get the opportunity to sit down with the provincial government and talk about what the plan is moving forward. Um, we've shown tremendous strength in our growth. We are by far the, mu the most um, sought after province to, to move to. Um, and we just need to know from the provincial government what their plan is to support that growth. And that comes beyond just the infrastructure in each of the municipalities. Uh, you look at healthcare, education, um, all of the other things that our municipalities rely on in that growth, uh, it also has to take be taken into consideration. Uh, when we've already got a large percentage of a population in each of our communities that don't have a family doctor, um, the wait times in emergency rooms, not knowing if there's going to be an ambulance available to respond to your emergency, all of those things need to be taken into consideration when we're looking at a substantial growth. So we'd like to sit down have a conversation about what that plan is and uh, and work with the provincial government. Are you optimistic, while well, talking about healthcare for a second, are you optimistic that some of the supports that yeah, the budget did deliver on, particularly around mental health and addictions, were presented in yesterday's budget? Because when I sit down with your members, Alberta municipality members across this province, mental health and addiction seems to come off more often than not. So is there a silver lining in this budget when it comes to more funding for supports that the municipalities have kind of been picking up uh, over the last few years? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, bit of prevention that we can start working on in each of our communities, Wetaskiwin is a great example of that. We struggle with the social issues, mental health and addictions, and we are getting the support that uh, used to only come to the big cities. So with Wetaskiwin being just under 13,000 people, to see that kind of support for mental health and addictions is is so important. Uh, we're having a tough time growing and, and bringing down our crime, uh, our crime rate, especially through the CSI. You know, being labeled as Alberta's most dangerous city a number of years um, over the last six uh, makes it really hard for us to grow. And a big part of that is looking after our community members, our residents, and the mental health that we've been struggling with for decades. So it is, I mean, and that's just one of the silver linings, I think, that we can thank the provincial government for in that budget for 2024. Um, we're going to be hosting a webinar here right away with our members to talk more about it get some input back from them. And that'll give us the ability to go and meet with the provincial government and talk about um, what it is we can work on for this year and maybe expectations for 2025. While you're heading into a meeting with your members, have you heard initial responses or reactions from your member communities from across Alberta? Or are you still waiting for that initial webinar that you're going to be hosting here shortly? We're going to be waiting for that webinar here. Uh, we'll get a, a good feel of what that is. Uh, I mean, you talk to a couple, even just our board members that um, get the initial look at what the budget is. Uh, and of course, without getting that deep dive into it and having our analysts go through the budget page by page and line by line to get a good understanding of what that's going to look like uh, is what we're going to be offering our members uh, this afternoon. And then it's going to be an on ongoing conversation. We've got our spring municipal leaders caucus coming up here in a couple of weeks. We'll welcome three or 400 municipally elected people from across the province to Edmonton and another chance to talk about that, as well as the uh, the opportunity to meet with and talk to ministers um, during our MLC. So I'm looking forward to that and, and, and just continuing that conversation. One of the, while it doesn't affect municipalities, it kind of does affect municipalities, and that is the education portion of the property taxes. Uh, in this budget, that increase goes from 4.7% to 9.2%, so almost a doubling of that property tax. While you do not get that money, you have to collect that money from your residents. Um, is this going to be a sticker shock for residents when they get their property taxes here in a few weeks? Absolutely, it is. And one of the hard things for us is, is that um, no matter how much you communicate the raise of that property tax um, through the education tax requisition, uh, not everybody hears that portion of it. And of course, they think that property taxes have gone up. What is our council doing? Our communities, you know, not listening to the residents. It's always just about taking more money, um, and which in most circumstances, if not all, is not the case. I think municipalities run a pretty tight ship are pretty fiscally responsible and have been dealing with provincial cuts and um, over the last few years for sure. Uh, so I think it's gonna be hard for us to make sure that that messaging gets out before the tax bills hit the mailbox. But again, it's just important that we have that communication with our members on what they can do um, to maybe mitigate some of those issues that they're gonna be seeing. They're absolutely gonna be seeing and hearing it, but uh, making sure that their residents know what has gone up and why. Before I let you go, I have one sort of political question for you, and that is, are municipalities better off today than they were before this budget? That's a that's a great question. I think it depends on the municipality. I think that um, the, the steady cut for grants in place of taxes, the changing to the traffic fines, paying for the RCMP biological casework studies, the uh, cuts over the last 12 years or so of MSI and now into LGFF. I think that um, municipalities could be in a much better position with more support from the province. And I think uh, they've had the opportunity over the last few years to make do with what they have. And I think they'll continue to do that. So depends on your municipality, depends on, on uh, maybe what your previous councils have done 20, 30, or even 40 years ago to make sure they're setting them up for success. But in terms of money from the province, especially for infrastructure, um, municipalities are not better off now than they were prior to this budget. Tyler, always a pleasure to sit down with you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Appreciate it. Take care.
Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth cross-border interviews and our eye-opening exploration of local government and the decisions that governments make in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage, committed to keeping you well-informed and engaged. Your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy over the last few weeks. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.